Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi and here I love to talk about luxury beauty. Today we are taking a look at the Chanel holiday collection. I think this collection is gorgeous, but I have to say I don't think all of the pieces suit me. So I only picked up a few items and I actually already had a couple of the lipsticks as well. So we're going to go through the items that I have. I picked up one of the highlights, the eye gloss duo, one of the new locks, and I have two of the Rouge Allure Luxe lipsticks already. Two of them are new and two of them were re-promotes, so I have the two re-promote shades. So we're going to go ahead and do swatches of those, and I want to start off by saying congratulations to the new creative directing group at Chanel Makeup because I am beyond excited. I just recently put out a video hoping for direction from Chanel. You know, I feel like they've been kind of a little bit scattered recently. And, you know, I'm very excited because all three of the names that they selected, all three of these artists are people that were kind of on my list of people I would love to see in the creative director role. So they're gonna have three creative directors and it sounds like they'll be rotating those. And I am very excited. I do hope that they are able to work together as a team to create cohesive collections. But if you follow any of them like on Instagram or if you follow any of them, you know, in general, their work, I think that these are three of the best choices they could have made right now. You know, I'm very excited to see where they go. So uh, yeah, I definitely wanted to mention that because I think it's great news. You know, I'm definitely ready for some fresh air in Chanel and let's go ahead and get started on the holiday collection. Now this holiday collection I think is very gorgeous, but I think it is going to be ideal for people with medium skin tones that lean a little bit warm. I picked up the highlighter in Or Rose. So this is the Eclat Lunaire. And this whole collection is inspired by the moon. Now I have to say when I think of things inspired by the moon, I think more of like those white glints and so forth, you know, kind of something a little frostier, a little bit cooler. But this collection is actually more like, uh, you know, when you see the, the moon and it's more, not like a blood moon per se, but you know, you've got more of that like reddish glint to it. That's more what this collection reminds me of, you know, in the starlight, you can see a little bit of the sun shining through the moon and so forth. Uh, so that's kind of what I think of with this, but not those cooler, moonlight tones that we've seen from other collections in the past. So from other brands. So this one here, I have to say, I just want to show you a comparison real quickly of the size because this is the oversized compact. So if you are familiar with the oversized bronzers that came out, this is going to be similar to that. Now, normally the highlighters do come in a large compact. So I knew this was oversized, but for some reason I was thinking it was more like this normal size. So this is the Pearl de Lumiere that came out, was this last year maybe? But this is eight grams of product. This new oversized one is 16 grams. So it's double. So look at that. And then for reference, this is the size of a standard eyeshadow compact from Chanel. So you can see the difference in sizes. So if you're purchasing one of these highlighters, they are expensive, but you're getting a ton of product. So I would recommend, uh, you know, thinking you know, of some other ways that you might want to use this other than just like as a cheek highlighter. Perhaps if you like to use it, you know, on places on your body or eyeshadow, or, you know, if you have a, a deeper skin tone and you want to use this as a shimmering face powder, you know, those are all great suggestions for using such a large highlighter. So I do actually have demos of this highlighter. Let's go ahead and cut to those. We'll do swatches at the end. And this highlighter, I've tried it a few different ways. So I use this as a blush. This is definitely dark enough for me to use as a shimmery blush on the face. For me, it's just a little bit too shimmery. That's not my uh, preferred aesthetic for a regular use, but it's definitely deep enough for a blush on fair and light skin tones, medium and deep skin tones. This would work very nicely as a highlighter. There is actually another highlighter in this collection that's even deeper. So I think this is a really nice product and I wanted to address the actual texture of this highlighter because I feel like the last several years, Chanel's had like a different texture for their highlighter, uh, you know, their holiday highlighter every year. It's been a little bit different. It's almost like they've been tinkering with the formula, seeing what they want. And 
I think this formula is really nice. And that's actually why I picked this one up because when I saw the promo photos, I wasn't sure if this was gonna be too deep for me. And then I saw some swatches and made it look a little bit lighter than I had initially expected. It's actually darker than I initially expected. So it's definitely deeper than I thought it was gonna be. But, you know, the texture of this, I knew this was going to be a different formula than the previous ones. And, you know, some of the previous ones, some of you have commented that you've had hard pan on some of your uh, recent highlighters from Chanel. And I know that has happened to me with certain ones in the past, not necessarily the most recent one, like the Rev de Camellia for me, but I know other people have experienced that. This one, I believe, is supposed to not get hard pan. And that's why I wanted to pick this up. So obviously I've only had this for a couple of days, so I can't really truly attest as to whether or not hard pan will develop on this, but it has not yet at this point. I've used this, I think five times so far, five or six times. And so far, no issues with that. And the formula feels really smooth. It's very silky and it's very pigmented. So for me with this highlighter, uh, you know, I've attempted this with highlighting brushes, fan brushes, so forth. Uh, and I've also tried buffing this in on my face just to kind of see what that would do. And, uh, you know, I prefer it with a light handed highlighting brush, something like the detail brush from the Sonia G Lotus series, or, you know, Hakuhoto has one very much like that. So, you know, just something kind of light and fluffy and small or a fan brush for even less pigmentation. And I have to say, I'm wearing it on the eyes today and I mixed it with a YSL unconforming taupe or is it non-conforming taupe? I forget which way they phrased it. But number 28 from their holiday collection, which by the way is my favorite taupe shadow right now. And I really love how it warmed it up without going too warm. I think it just makes a really nice uh, you know, mix. So if you have some shadows that you want to warm up just a little bit, or even a blush that you want to warm up a little bit, I think this is a really nice highlighter for that purpose. So overall, I'm very happy with the highlighter. I think it is gorgeous. Let's take a look at swatch and some comparisons for this real quickly. So you can see, you know, how deep the highlighter is. It's really more of a coppery rose. So or rose, you're thinking like golden rose. I would say more coppery rose than gold. It's more of that like um, orangey or gold, not a yellow gold, which is kind of a departure for some of the Chanel ones recently. So let's just take a look at a couple highlighters here. This is Pearl de Lumiere from Chanel. And this was actually one of my, this is one of my favorite ones that they have released. This formula is gonna be a little bit stiffer in the pan than the new or rose. So this one, you know, the pigmentation's great, but you get less product up at a time because it's a little bit of a stiffer formula, whereas you're gonna get plenty of product with or rose. So it's definitely plenty straight from the pickup. Next, this is the Rev de Camellia from Chanel. And I think this is a really beautiful highlighter. You can see though, um, texturally, this kind of looks like it's hard pan here and maybe it is starting to develop, but it's actually um, not really a hard pan issue for me. And you can see that this is gonna be lighter and peachier in tone. This is gonna be more of a peachy rose. Just a couple more to look at. This is Laura Mercier Rose Glow. And this is gonna be closer to the, uh, you know, Rev de Camellia, but you can see it's a little bit pinker than the Chanel. And last up, we have the Guerlain Meteorites Pearl Dust Palette. I'm just gonna swatch the pink and the peach. So this is pearly pink and pearly amber. And I have to say, I love, this is still like my favorite highlighting palette. You can see this is gonna be my closest match to the Chanel but it's still not a match. It's it's lacking that coppery tone, but you can see how peachy this is, and in comparison, how much more coppery the Chanel actually looks. All right, so just a little bit about this highlighter. This is made in Italy. We have 16 grams of product and 18 month shelf life. Let's go ahead and move on to the eye duo. So this is actually a multi-use illuminating eye gloss, and it's made in France. We have 2.8 grams of product, and there 
are, there's an 18 month shelf life for this. Let's look at the demos here. And I uh, double checked with my essay to make sure that this is lip safe. And one of the ways that she uses this as well that she recommended to me, and by the way, I order from Jalissa at the Aventura Boutique, all of her information's down below in the description box and you know is actually using this on the lips so i have that on today as a lip topper as well and i have a couple of demos with that but i did want to test this out on the eyes and that's why i wanted to put this video up a day or so later i really wanted to test the longevity so i put i've tried this on straight on the lids and you're going to have creasing like immediately this is really going to be more for an editorial look if you put these eye gloss shades on the shade that looks a little bit deeper more coppery in the pan that's going to be more pigmented the other one is more sheer with just some gold sparkle in there and they're both pretty sheer shades though so you're really seeing an accumulation of the glitter particles in there and that there's really not much of an opaque base to either of these so you know if you're looking for something with a glossy look to wear and stay put these aren't going to be that this is going to be great for just adding a little bit of shine to certain areas you can use this as a highlighter on the face as well and i also put this on top of some powder shadow to kind of test this out so i have it on top of one of the the taupe shape from the chanel tweed the brownie rose and you know it looks gorgeous but it is going to crease so if that does not bother you this is definitely something you can tap out and continue to wear it's just going to add a little bit of sparkle but i personally bought this specifically to use on the lips so let's take a look at some swatches here and again we have these two shades the shade that looks more yellow is going to be a little bit more here we'll put this on my hand uh it's going to be a little bit more of a sheer product uh you know the base is more sheer and the sparkle throughout is scattered just a little bit more it's like the concentration of sparkle in there is just a little bit less so i find if you want something more intense you want to go with the more coppery shade but i really like both of these and i think they are gorgeous colors uh you know for the lips in particular and again this is something you can use on the face or the eyes as well and i wanted to compare it to this this is the guerlain gel gloss in rose gold that just came out as part of their holiday collection and this one comes in a pot you can see you've got a you know it's more of a, a wet gel more like balmy and this is the color there so i want to compare this i like to use this one on my lips as well but it is also safe to use on the eyes and the face and you can see that the Guerlain is going to be more sheer. There's less concentration of sparkle. So if you want something more sparkly, the Chanel is going to be a better option. And I believe they are similarly priced. So overall, I have to say I really like both products specifically for the lips. I personally don't intend on using either of them for the eyes. But of course, I did want to try it out and just see how that turned out. So let's go ahead and move on to lips. And... I actually have the new lip lock. There are two lip locks that came out. I have number 88, Rose Mystere, which is going to be your lighter shade. So if you haven't tried these locks yet, these are a liquid lipstick. You kind of want to put on one layer and let that dry and then you can layer it on. It's going to give you like a glossy finish to it. So I think these are just really nice lip locks. And I really like the way they perform. Now, I have to say, if you have warmer undertones in your skin, this is gonna look more mauve on you, which is what I was hoping for on me, but it's definitely gonna be a warmer rose. So I have just a couple of comparisons. These are my closest lip locks that I wanted to share. This one here is 64 Exigence. We're just gonna put a little bit here. You can see that Exigence is gonna be a little bit pinker. It's brighter. Whereas Rose Mystere is going to be just a little bit more um, dustier rose. And then we also have 63 Ultimate. Let's go ahead and put this one right up here at the top. Oh, let me get a little bit more of that. There we go. You can see this one is, um, you know, just a little bit of a thinner formula. It can get a little bit lighter on the lips. 
This one's gonna be a little bit more mauve. So again, that is 63 Ultimate. And then this was a limited edition one that came out not that long ago. This is Dark Blossom. And this is one of my favorite shades. It is gonna be a little bit deeper and a little bit more purple. But I wanted to compare this because, you know, I do think the two shades go nicely together and I, I love Dark Blossom. I actually just wore this again the other day. It's one of, it's probably the one that I use the most from the LAX. So as you can see from the lip demo here, just for the application of this, it's really easy to use, very easy to go on smoothly. You kinda, I like to use two layers of this. You can definitely use more if you want a glossier shine. And these are fairly long lasting. So they're gonna last longer than a lip gloss and last longer than a typical satin lipstick. So they will dry down and become more matte over time, but they, they last fairly well. However, if you're eating like a meal with like a high oil content that will remove some of this product. So just so you know, if you've got like regular activities and you have like a non-greasy lunch or something like that, this will hold up really well. But if you are introducing any sort of oil products there, it will kind of, uh, you know, make it look a little bit patchier and so forth. Now, product information on these is, these are made in France, the Lip Lax. They have an 18 month shelf life, just like the other Chanel items we have here today. And they're 5.5 milliliters or 0.18 ounces. And one last thing I wanted to mention about the lip lock here in 88. So that's this long one right here. It pairs really nicely with the Chanel lip liner in 172. This is Bois de Rose. So if you have this one, you can see this is gonna be a slightly you know pinker version, but they pair really well together. This is almost the same shade as Exigence. Let me put those next to each other too, so you can see that. And I think they just make a nice, nice match. So let's take a look at the Rouge Allure Lex Strays that I picked up. These I picked up when they initially launched. So the Rouge Allure Lex Stray is a lipstick that launched earlier in the year and you've got a slim style Rouge Allure packaging. The Rouge Allure always has kind of that push top and these are technically refillable, but not the limited edition shades don't show up in the refills. So they have four Rouge Allure Lex Stray as part of this holiday collection. Two shades are new and limited edition, which I did not pick up. And two of the shades were in the original launch. So this one here is 824 Rose Invincible or Ambicibla, I'm sorry, my pronunciation is not great, but you can see that the name is written here on the side. So my issue with the packaging on these is that there is nowhere to have the name. So this just has your general Rouge Allure Lextre logo, but because they're refillable, uh, the name is printed on here, but it's down here in the cap. So I do wish that they had printed that up higher and a little bit darker, because it's a little bit harder to see. So we're just gonna do some quick looks at this and I will leave the video to these linked down below in the description box in case you are looking for some comparisons or anything. So this one here is 824 and it's right here. I think this is a really beautiful shade and these shades are gonna be pretty vibrant. This is gonna be your glossy lipstick form of a lip lac essentially. And they are long lasting, very thin on the lips. You don't need a lot of product. You're gonna get pretty much full pigmentation with one swipe. The other one that I have, again, that's a repromote. This is 858 Rouge Royal. And this is gonna be more of a red shade. And I really like this one. I think it's a great classic holiday red. So those are the options here for the lipsticks that I have. And I hope this was helpful. So overall, my thoughts on the Chanel Holiday Collection, I think is a gorgeous collection of warmer tone, you know, classic shades. And I think that they are going to be best suited for medium skin tones and above. Uh, you know, I do think the quad is, the eyeshadow quad is gorgeous, and I think that would be beautiful on fair skin as well. But, uh, you know, I think it's gonna suit people with warmer skin tones more so than those with cooler skin tones. The highlighter, I think, is really beautiful, but, and I really, really like the formula. It is a little bit deeper for me than I typically go to. You can see these are all kind of my darkest highlighters I have in my collection, and this Chanel is gonna be significantly deeper. Uh, so I like it, but I just, 
you know, it's not ideal for me because it's a little bit dark, but I think the formula is really great. So if they continue with this, that'd be great. And I will definitely let you know if mine develops hard pan or anything over time, but so far so good. And I think it's really nice. I do think the oversized pan, although it looks beautiful, I'm never going to use that much highlight. So for me, I'd rather have it in the smaller packaging personally. And yeah, the eyeglass duo I think is is it's a nice product it's nice to see something a little different from chanel i think it's a nice way to kind of add a little sparkle to something and for me again with the intended use for me being on the lips i think it's a product that i will end up using a lot during the holiday season because it's just nice to add a little bit of sparkle to something and it doesn't feel gritty at all it feels very smooth and a lot of times if you get some of those more glittery lipsticks you can feel that glitter and you know it's just not that comfortable so i'd rather add a little bit of glitter to lipsticks that i already have using something like this chanel eye gloss or the guerlain gloss instead of purchasing another lipstick in a glittery shade personally so i think it's a great way to kind of help you use what you already have and still get kind of some of those holiday sparkle lipsticks so uh, those are my thoughts on the holiday collection. I'd love to know if you picked anything up and what your thoughts are on them. So in summation, I have to say that I do really enjoy all three of the items that I picked up, but for me personally, none of them are must have items. So I think they are gorgeous and I can definitely see, you know, particularly the highlighters being must haves for people with slightly deeper skin tones than I have. So it's definitely worth taking a look if any of these items interest you. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon. So have a wonderful day.